I make a lot of talking head video content, and I mean a lot of content. So in this video, I wanna walk you through my entire process from camera, microphone, and software, plus some AI tools to speed up the process and why using Riverside can actually make the whole process way easier. So let me actually swap this around and I'll show you what I'm looking at every time I record. First up is the camera. I record all my content with a Sony a7 IV mirrorless camera with a Sigma 35 millimeter lens f1.4. I usually keep it around f1.6 or 1.8. I'm recording directly to the SD card on that camera, but I also have a video HDMI output going to my Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro switcher. This way I can preview the video right here on a monitor. On this monitor, I also have my B-roll camera or top-down shot, so if I need to preview that, I could see it all right here. Plus I have a secondary display for my Mac going over here, which is really helpful for like webinars or if I wanna screen share something directly from my switcher. Audio-wise, my audio is actually being recorded into this Rodecaster Pro 2 but the microphone is actually a Sennheiser MKH-416. That's the shotgun microphone right here. It's an industry standard, and that microphone is connected to that Rodecaster Pro 2 over there. I'm recording the audio separately directly into Audio Hijack on my computer. You can see it running right now. I'm recording the audio. It's a simple little recording. I could record it into the camera or to the Rodecaster. I like recording my audio separately. I match it up later in a multicam clip, and I also run some filters through it using Isotope RX10. I'll show you that in a second. As far as a B-roll camera, this is my Sony A6400 camera with another Sigma lens, a 24 to 70. I like a zoom lens on that if I need to get close to something like an iPhone, and that's mounted to the wall using this newer arm. Again, that HDMI cable and constant power is running down the wall, and both of my cameras are going into that ATEM Mini Pro. And yeah, I got a couple podcast microphones over here if I need as well. Also, I'm doing a screen recording right now, and the tool I use for that is CleanShot X. I'll put a link to all the tools I'm using in the video description, but you can actually see it running down here on the monitor. And I like it because it actually captures mouse clicks and puts a little nice circle around it. And if I do any keyboard shortcuts like Command and then a space bar, you'll see those keyboard shortcuts right there at the bottom. So if I was done recording, I would hit Stop on Audio Hijack, Stop CleanShot X, Stop my B-roll camera, and then hit the Stop button on my Sony a7 IV. Let me show you what happens after that. Now I edit my talking head video content in Final Cut, and as you can see, I have two SD cards. This is from my A-roll camera, or my Sony a7 IV, and my B-roll camera. I start with the A-roll. I actually run that video first through an AI tool, and I'll show you that in a second. Final Cut brings up that import window, and I actually already have two videos recorded on this SD card. So I'm gonna add these to some specific events. This one is about a new top secret Riverside feature, so I'll put that into the Riverside features. I don't want this window to close because I'm actually gonna import both of these video files at once. And this other video is all about podcast tips, the difference between Apple Podcasts and Spotify and what your show looks like in each. So I'll click that video, import, and now both of those videos are being imported. Now I actually had some screen recordings from both of these videos, and you'll see here in Final Cut, I favored all the folders that I quickly reference. Using CleanShot X, all my screen recordings are saved to this folder. And you'll see I have these two right here. This one was about Apple Podcasts versus Spotify. So I'll import that into my podcast tips event here in Final Cut. And this one is about the top secret Riverside features. And then I'll add that to a different event here. Now, once the A-roll finishes importing, I'll import the B-roll. But while all that's copying, let me work on the audio. So like I mentioned, I record all my audio to a separate WAV file. And here's my folder where all that's saved. Let's start out with this podcast and every app audio, the difference between Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I've set every WAV file to open up automatically into Isotope RX10. This is what the editor looks like. And while I don't edit the audio specifically, I do run a couple filters. Number one is breath control. I don't particularly like hearing my breaths in the videos, so I have a preset set for my microphone, and I render the entire audio clip so it removes any breaths. It does a really good job at this. I love this tool in Isotope. There's obviously a bunch of other tools here. Another big one is DS. I use their podcast interview DS, and so any S's or sibilants, I can render that out of the audio, and that'll just make it sound way cleaner. These are really the only two filters I typically use in Isotope. Again, there are a bunch of other tools like Noise Remover, EQ, but I actually apply some of those directly in Final Cut. Once I've run these two filters, the de and my Breath Remover, then I'll export a different version of this video file. I export it as a WAV file, the highest quality I can, and I typically put at the end of the file name just the word FIX in all caps. This is where I can tell the difference between the audio files I've processed and the ones I've not. Now you'll see here I have podcast in every app.wav, and podcast and every app fix.wave. Yes, very scientific, I know. Now going back to Final Cut, this is in my podcast tips event. And so now I'll open the import window again with Command I. I have Riverside Audio as another favorite folder here in Final Cut. And I'll do the podcast and every app fix. This is what I just ran through Isotope RX10. And I'll import this audio directly. 
Now it's still importing from the SD card and other media, so I'll give that a few minutes. And while I wait for that, let me show you how much easier this would be if I just recorded in Riverside. And yes, even recording solo video content or talking head content, you have so many more benefits when you record directly to the Riverside platform. For instance, let's say I want to record a solo video about a new Riverside feature. I'll jump into my studio. I can select my Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro so I get the same video shot that I'm recording to the local SD card. And I can still choose my Rodecaster Pro as my microphone input. And while I'm not wearing headphones, I'm the only one recording here in the studio, so I don't have to worry about noise bleed or echo or anything like that. I'll join the studio. I can make this frame full screen by clicking the expand frame option here. And now I've eliminated a need for a preview monitor. While I have my multi-view over here, I can also just use Riverside to see the camera shot and I can preview it and say, yeah, looks great. And I'll title the recording new Riverside feature. You can see I have the audio levels here so I can monitor that. And Riverside records locally. So your audio is gonna be uncompressed wave, video is high quality, and I don't have to worry about importing or SD cards or anything. I'm gonna record directly to the Riverside platform. Not only that, but Riverside can now act as your teleprompter. I can actually paste a script right here. I'll put some Latin filler text and then turn on the teleprompter feature. And now the script can automatically scroll while I'm recording the content and I can use this as my teleprompter. So Riverside is now your preview monitor and your teleprompter and your SD card and pretty much everything else. Of course, I can decrease the text size, increase it, change the timing or speed of the scroll and more. And let me hit record. And just to give you an idea, this is actually the video recorded in Riverside using my audio, using the same camera I typically use. And I can record in up to 4K if I have a 4K capture device. And so you can record that solo video content right here in Riverside and you get lots of benefits after you're done recording as well. Let me show you that. I can see that my content's been fully uploaded and now I can leave the studio. So here's a solo recording I did in Riverside. Now, of course I can download my raw video, high quality video file right here and my uncompressed WAV file. So I can download those and still edit it in Final Cut like I normally would rather than importing from the SD card. I just download it here. But because I recorded in Riverside, now I have access to the Magic Clips feature. So I can have Riverside generate multiple vertical clips ready to share to social media using AI. Basically does that for me. Or I can jump into the Riverside editor. And using the Riverside editor in my content, I also get a transcript from my recording automatically. I didn't have to do anything to get an additional transcript. I can edit the content by selecting and deleting words. I still have my timeline, which I can zoom in and zoom out, just like I was editing in Final Cut. I can split parts of the clips, select a region, remove it. And now I'm editing my video content basically like I'm in Final Cut. Plus I can do things like add captions quickly automatically, change the layout and format with just the click of a button. You would have to create multiple projects to do that in Final Cut, and I could just do it with a click right here in Riverside. I can use some of our magic tools like remove all silences from the recording, add a little rounded corners and maybe some color or border around the image. Then I can just export that video when I'm done recording it right here from Riverside. So whatever your workflow, try recording directly in Riverside and you get access to all of these features like magic clips, editing via the transcript, remove silences, and a ton more. If you want to learn more about the Riverside editor, I'll put a link to that down in the description or you can click it above. All right, my A roll has finished importing and so I'll eject that SD card and then put in my B roll and I'll be making a multicam clip from that. Here's my B roll. I'm adding to my podcast tips event and I'll import it here. Now my next step is actually taking my A roll video, which I imported right here, and I'm gonna run this through an AI tool called Gling.ai. I pulled up the original file here and I'm gonna open Gling. Gling is a powerful AI tool. I basically import my video file. I'm gonna title this project and hit continue. What Gling does is remove any silences and it can recognize bad takes. So if I was gonna say something and I started over and over, so if I was gonna say something and I started over and over and then I continue, typically the last take is the best one and the one I normally wanna keep. Well, Gling knows that and it will automatically remove all those bad takes and silences. So this way my A-roll video is almost ready to go once it's run through Gling AI. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment and how I import that into Final Cut for finishing the edit. And here in the transcript, you can cut or uncut anything you'd like. As you can see, I had multiple starts to this video and it kept the last one where I actually finished the start of the video and continued. Same thing here, multiple takes and it only kept the last one. It does a pretty good job doing this automatically. I'll typically go in and change a few things. And then when I'm ready, I can export this file. And because I record my audio separately and B-roll, I actually do a Final Cut Pro multicam clip. Again, you can do this with DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere. And so I'm gonna do a Final Cut XML file. That XML file downloads to my computer. And now if I go back into Final Cut, I can import that XML file. Here in my downloads folder, you see it here. And when I import it, it's gonna create a new event and a new project. You'll see the project name and Gling. But I can actually drag this project to that other event, which was my podcast tips event. And then I'm gonna delete the event that Gling automatically created when I imported that XML file. When I do that, I still have the project created by Gling. 
and I might delete this just because I like my titles to be clean. And the multicam clip generated in that project is still here. Now, if I go to the project that was created by that XML file import, you'll see here all the cuts are now made to my video, all the silences are removed, and only the best takes are kept. But I still need to adjust the multicam clip file. So if I double click the multicam clip, you'll see here's my A roll. Now I want to add my B roll, so I'm going to add an angle. I'll add my B roll shot here, sync selection to monitoring angle. Now I'll keep everything in sync. I'll add another angle. This is going to be my screen grab. This is from Clean Shot. Now I record the audio for my screen grab specifically so I can sync it here in a Final Cut multicam clip. And I'll add one more angle, which was actually the audio that I ran through Isotope RX10. Here's my fixed audio. And again, I will sync that selection to the monitoring angle as well. I like to name all my angles just for organization and quickly being able to refer to everything. And when it comes to my audio track, I do like to add a little loudness here in the Final Cut Audio Effects panel. Just brings that volume up a little bit without distorting it. Now that I've added all my angles, I'll go back to the project that was created. It still just looks like my multicam clip, but I can select all the clips here in the timeline. And then in the top right corner, if I go over to the Info tab, I can actually select an active audio angle for all the clips at once. You'll see here all the angles that I've renamed myself. And if I click VoiceOver, now it's using the good audio file that I recorded across the entire project. And if you didn't know, that's where you can change all the clips at once. For instance, you can just change the audio angle clip by clip here. And if you select multiple and right click, then you can't change the clips. But if you select multiple, go over to the I tab and then select the audio angle, you can change them in mass. Now, when I did something like B-roll shot and screen grab, I'll actually choose to set the angle for multiple clips now before I go into even deeper editing. As you can see, I'm definitely not looking at the camera right here, so I don't want the A-roll shot. I'm probably doing something in the B-roll shot. So I'm going to scroll until I see myself look back at the camera, which is right about there. And so I'll select all the clips in that section where I'm looking down at the B-roll shot, go over here to active video angle, choose B-roll, and now I've automatically edited to that B-roll shot. All the edits that Gling made still preserved, now you see I do need to crop this video a little bit and I actually had to film off center because the light was reflecting in the display. So if I double click and go into my multicam clip, I'm gonna change the monitoring angle just so I can preview it here. I'll click the entire clip here in the multicam editor. Let me change the scale and positioning, center these phones. And now that I've done it here in the multicam editor, these changes will be made across the entire project whenever I use the B-roll shot. Probably need to adjust the rotation a little bit because it's a little off center. But you can see all the edits are made and even though all the cuts have remained, because I cropped the clip in the multicam editor, those changes go across the project. Now I'll do a first pass editing this content, changing all the angles to the B-roll as I need. And if there's any edits that Gling didn't catch, I'll go and do all those. After that, it's adding some B-roll or overlays. Things like this quote, if I'm making a point right here. Sometimes I'll take it from a previous project because it has my edits made, like the color overlay and font. These presets are actually from Motion VFX. This is from their M Podcast pack, so it allows you to put a little tip and text right there and a little nice animated in and out. I'll put a link to this pack from Motion VFX in the description. Another plugin pack I use is the MKBHD plugins, and one of my favorites is this zoom in feature, which does a great job of just zooming in and then zooming back out. And I can adjust where that zoom is focusing on and how much it's zooming in and out very quickly. And now I can create visually appealing zoom in and zoom out just by overlaying the zoom effect on the B-roll. Typically, this is what a project will look like after I've added all those overlays and points, maybe some additional B-roll from other video files. I'll put the little subscribe and comment animation here at the very end of the video. And then when I'm done, I'll send this project to Compressor to make an MP4 video file and upload it to YouTube. So that's my entire talking head video editing process from recording to the camera or using Riverside, then using a tool like Gling AI to quickly remove silences and bad takes, all the way to adding overlays and multicam clips in Final Cut. If you have any questions on my process, whether it's gear, software, apps, equipment, whatever, leave a comment below this video. I answer all of those personally. I'd love to help you there. And if you want to learn more about using Riverside for your solo recording content or video podcast, we have great videos on the channel about that. Subscribe, hit the like on this video, and then check out this video up here if you want to learn more about the Riverside editor, or if you need help talking about gear, microphones, and cameras, this video right here is a great one to watch. You should check it out. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video.